Raise your hand if you've ever been in a stream and had your ears blasted out by super obnoxious alerts. You pointing at me? I know you're not talking about my stream. That, that couldn't be me when I'm live on Twitch on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, I'm going to show you how you can normalize your audio for your alerts. A clean and even listening experience for your viewers should be a top priority. And if you get it right from the start, it's less that you got to do later. So what happens is people will usually take alerts or take clips or sound clips from different pieces of media and then use them for their stream. What happens is people will often take sound effects from anywhere, right? Because all the streamers I know, they're all getting their sound effects and their media from properly licensed website distributors. Nobody's using apps like 4K Downloader to rip YouTube videos so that they can take the clip that they want, use it for their stream. Now, because the people who rip those videos or those movies or TV shows and post them up on YouTube, they don't usually care about proper audio leveling. It's not usually what they're after. So a lot of the times that media comes down from YouTube, either really, really loud or really, really quiet. So first we're gonna take a look at our audio levels in OBS to kind of get an idea of where we should be hovering around. And then we'll move over to using Audacity, which is a tool we're gonna to be using to adjust our audio levels. So first let's take a look at OBS. And right now, all of my audio levels are going to be scrunched into a single meter because I'm using the Beacon Mix Create to send all my audio to OBS. I still have some multi-track audio stuff to figure out in my setup. However, if you're looking at my audio settings right now, you're seeing that when I'm speaking, I'm usually averaging in between negative 10 and negative 15 decibels. And then sometimes when I get a little loud or I have a plosive, you see that I'm getting just about to the negative five. To me, that is the perfect area. Because I have some pretty heavy compression settings and because I have a limiter in OBS, I very, very rarely actually get up to the peaking levels. Somewhere in between the negative 10 and the negative 15 range is where I like to keep my voice when I'm streaming or recording content at my computer. And now on my gaming PC, I'm going to bring in the pretzel player, which is the music player that I use to play properly licensed music on my stream. Hashtag ad, they're good shit. So I'll hit play here. Now my guess right now with my music, hitting at about negative 30. To me, that is too loud. To have this as background music when I'm doing a just chatting stream or even just like if I'm just sitting here talking to chat, that is too loud for me. For background music when I'm streaming, I tend to keep it in between like negative 40 and negative 45 decibels. As long as it is averaging somewhere in between there, I find that to be the perfect medium for me being able to hear the music in my headphones, um, even before I was doing submixing, for the chat to be able to hear the music and at least make out the music, uh, as well as not being too overpowering when I'm speaking. Now let's say that I wanna turn up the music to just have like a quick jam session, right? How far should I push that? Well, I will tend to go up to about the negative 20 range. At the negative 20 range, if I want to speak and I'm trying to speak over it, you can still hear me a good amount, but you can obviously still hear the, the music a lot more. So I'm going to bring that back down to about negative 40. Now, you could differ. You could find that that is too loud or too quiet. It's all going to be about your preference and how you want to do it. So start at the negative 40 range. As far as your music, go up, go down and find your happy medium. Sometimes it really depends on the, the music that you're listening to as well, right? Like I can find lo-fi. I can play a little bit louder than normal music because it's the music is so soft, whereas heavy metal, you might be dialing back a little bit. Now, what about alerts? OK, so my mic average speaking somewhere in between negative 10 and negative 15 as far as music usually somewhere between negative 40 and negative 45 let's throw alerts on there and let's see where those levels come in what up it's poop daddy from the future i had to re-record this whole section <laughs> all right so i got some music going what i want to show you is where i have my alert sound effect come in and where i have my alert tts or the text to speech come in just to give you an idea so with the music playing in the background at about in between negative 40 and negative 45. I'll just pause here to show you. Ish. <laughs> so let's replay one of my alerts. Bitch! I love you! Patch Tech gifted a tier one sub to Rob Diesel lot. Okay, now let's turn the music off so you can get a definitive look at where those alerts come in. Bitch! I love you! Patch Tech gifted a tier one sub to Rob Diesel lot. Here's another alert. I will eat your ass. 1440p in my bum, baby. 
So for me, I always have the alerts come in at around the negative 30 decibel range. That seems to be loud enough to where people can hear it, but not to where it is like really distracting or completely taking away from whatever content. As far as the text-to-speech, most people, I would assume, probably keep their text-to-speech at the same volume level as the alert. However, I want my text-to-speech a little bit more louder, you know, because it's it's dialogue. You want it to be heard and, and understood. So I, I typically keep my text-to-speech around 10 to 15 decibels less than my normal speaking voice. So for TTS, anywhere in between like negative 15 and negative 20, I think it's, again, loud enough to be heard and understood, but not overpowering in any way in, in case I'm already talking when a TTS comes in. And to me, that sounds pretty good. Again, this is all subjective. These are just kind of starting points for you to figure out where you need to begin, and then you can make changes from there. Now that we have an idea of where we need to start as far as our audio levels, let's get into actually editing an audio alert that we have. Now, I'm not going to show you how to get whatever audio that you want to use, okay? I'm expecting you to have an audio file on your computer ready to go, ready to get normalized. You're going to want an audio application called Audacity. This is a super simple but super powerful tool that you can use for very mild audio editing. Even as a newbie, you don't need to have a lot of experience to make this work. I have two example files here, both that I had just ripped from different pieces of media, and we are going to use Audacity to level them. So with Audacity open, click and drag one of your files in here, and then we're going to give this one a play as it is to see where it comes out as far as the audio levels are concerned. Eat a dick. Eat a All right, that was loud, so let's normalize it. To the left of the waveform, there is a little fader here for gain. You can make things quieter or you can make things louder. Obviously, because those audio levels are going off of the chart, we need to dial it back a lot. So let's dial it back, let's see, negative 10 decibels. Eat a dick. We've come down quite a bit. We're in between negative uh, 12 and negative 18. So we want to come down to like negative 24 to negative 30 range. So let's dial this back another 10. Eat a dick. Eat a dick. Eat a That's good to me. So with our alert playing around the negative 30 range, we're just going to export this file as an MP3 file, export MP3. If you want to export it as a wave, you can. However, if you want to be mindful of your storage within your cloud, uh, you know, alerts, whether it's stream elements or stream labs, get off stream labs, then just export it as an MP3. It'll be better. So I'm just going to do eat a dick. quiet er one save. If you want to add additional information to the ID3 tags, you can. I never do, so just hit OK. All right, let's do the next one. Oh, is that your child? I'm going to rip out his motherfucking eyeball. Also, very loud. Let's go ahead and dial that back 20 decibels and hit play. Oh, is that your child? I'm going to rip out his motherfucking eyeball. I'm going to Could even go maybe just a tiny bit more. Oh, is that your child? I'm going to rip out his motherfucking eyeball. I'm going to and now that we have our two quieter files, we can delete these other ones. So the last link in this chain is when you go to upload this to your alert website, every alert you have has its own volume slider as well. I don't know what the default of stream elements is because I'm really, really new to it. It might be 50 or maybe 80%. So when you upload these, you're gonna to have to play around with it. So if you upload this to your cloud and it's too quiet, then aim for somewhere closer to negative 18 or negative 24 decibels, right? And if it's too loud, then go the other way. So it's going to depend on whatever service that you're using for your alerts. But you know that every sound effect that you create and everyone that you manage is all going to be around the same volume. So the adjustments that you have to do later on will be minimal and your audience will thank you for it. Before you export it, if you are looking for a little bit additional control over the media, Audacity does have an extensive effect list. You can do fade in, fade out, echo, compression, distortion. Uh, it really has a long list of things that you can do uh, if you feel like getting into the nitty gritty. Now, if you're gonna use these sound effects for your stream deck, for your stream to play back, keep those same audio levels. However, if you're gonna use these with your Stream Deck or with your GoXLR, uh, you're gonna to wanna to keep them closer to how high in volume your voice is. So when I'm speaking, I'm currently in the negative 10 to negative 15 decibel range. When I have sound effects that I want to inject into my mic for Discord or for gaming, I want those a little bit closer in volume to my mic. So I'll have those somewhere between like five and eight decibels lower than my speaking voice. Because when you're playing sound effects in Discord, 
Discord, you want them to be kind of level to your normal speaking voice. You definitely don't want them louder. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, is this something that I need to do? Just think back, watching your chat while you're live and see if anybody has ever said, yo, homie, your stuff is too loud. Please turn it down. Maybe this is something you should think about. And of course, if you have any extensive questions about this routine, please feel free to hit me up in the comments or join the Discord. We have a Discord that's dedicated to helping people with their technology when it comes to streaming and content creation. So we'd love to have you. Take care.